Rhett Power is one of the top business coaches in the world. His business became one of the fastest growing in the whole country during the Great Recession. He eventually sold it and began speaking and coaching other people kind of in that same entrepreneurial realm. But in the last few years, he's started to blaze a different path, one all about accountability. He's now creating a movement and a community around helping leaders understand they aren't alone and there are other leaders who can keep them accountable. As I learned, he's followed his gut through all of it, blazing a new trail at every turn. This is Rhett Power, the Pathfinder. Okay, so I like to start with a little game. You ready to play a game? I am ready. Okay, when was the best time in your life? Man, you know, I don't have a hard story. You know, I'm not <laughs> like my childhood was idyllic. Uh, my work has been idyllic. Um, I, I remember driving, I was in this motorcade in, in Afghanistan, and I'm thinking, life is freaking great. <laughs> but you're I mean, in Afghanistan I'm saying in Afghanistan. that. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, so, and, and I'm just thinking, wow. Like I'm doing something and meaningful. Um, I'm having fun in, in my work. Um, I just I don't have like this hard story of like uh, struggle and and overcoming some some massive adversity. Like I I, I mean I've had we've had bad things happen, but um, life has been good. Yeah. Do you think that's because of the stance you've chosen to take? One of saying. All right, this is happening. It sounds bad, but no big deal. We'll keep moving forward. Do you think it's your perspective that's made it seem that way? I mean, we got our butt kicked in business. Uh, I mean, all the time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we slept in our vans. We we had no money. We we started a business in the middle of the financial crisis in two thousand seven and and going into two thousand eight nine. Um, so we had hard times, but our attitude never changed. And I, and I, don't, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know where the positivity and the and the uh, the outlook on life where that comes from, and and how in when things are not so great, how you maintain that positivity. But I try, and I, it's it's I get, maybe it's just a natural state for me. I don't know. Yeah. When do you think the worst time in your life was? Was it living in the van? No, that was actually, that was almost a necessary thing, I think. The, the economic crisis then and the, 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 uh, the financial crisis actually made us a better company. It made us run tighter. It made us run more efficiently. We didn't have a lot of extra money. We didn't have you know, VC funds knocking on our door to, to put millions of dollars in the business. So it made us a leaner and meaner and more... Uh, efficient, maybe? efficient company. Mm. The worst time wasn't really the business. The worst time was when my second son was born. He, uh, we didn't know he was it was going to have some issues, and so he was born with something called CDH, which is a, a, a diaphragmatic hernia. Oh wow! Uh, uh, and and uh, almost died. Wow. Uh, the night that he was born, the doctor came in and put his arm around me. I was a big, big guy, and he put his arm around me. He said, you know, you need to go ahead and plan for your son's funeral. Oh, um, wow. And that was the biggest gut punch I think I've ever, I know I've ever had. Um, wow. And to see his, you know, um, where he was and how he didn't have much of a chance. Uh, Eighty percent of the children at the time that he was born died. Oh my gosh! Um, they had to put him on a new technology called an ECMO machine for, mm -hmm. which was a heart lung bypass. Um, had to sacrifice carotid artery to put it in. Ooh. Um, he had to survive that, and then they were going to have to survive the surgery, which is a the, the the thing that happens is you have a hole in your diaphragm when, in development. And the later it happens, or the earlier it happens, the worse it is because your lungs don't develop. Uh, 
fortunately it happened late for him. So he had about 75% of his lungs uh, and they were able to do the surgery, uh, put everything back where it was supposed to, and the, and the, what happens is, is the, all the, all, all the stuff inside your stomach and kidneys all it migrates up here into the lung cavities. Mm. And that's why you can't survive. But they were able to sort of put him back together. Um, and he survived. Um, he got RSV when he was 10 months old and went back on a respirator. Got uh, staph infection and MRSA. And, oh, my gosh. Um, almost didn't make that, but he survived that. He had a bowel obstruction when he was three. Had to rush him from El Salvador to Miami to have surgery. He survived that. So he's meant to be here. So, but that was the toughest period where where he, we didn't know if he was going to make it. How old is he now? Fifteen. Wow. And a pain in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> but brilliant. But brilliant. What What did that time teach you, if anything? What did you get from that time, other than the the anguish? <laughs> um. That's a great question. I don't. I think an appreciation for um, life, appreciation for uh, all the blessings that we have, um, and just an appreciation for him uh, being in my life because um, he's a, he's a pain in the neck. He's a teenager, but he's also brilliant. He writes music. He composes. Um, he, uh, you know, writes screenplays. I mean, he's just a brilliant kid. He's supposed to be here for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Right, he's supposed to be here. He's got a purpose. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, you learn um, to appreciate life. It sort of uh, makes you think about what's important. When was a turning point for you in your own life? Wow. Um, I think there have probably been four or five. All right, let's hear it. I remember walking into my boss's office when I was 29 and saying and handing in my resignation letter and I I'd had a I had a pretty good promising career at Clear Channel Communications and uh, but I had decided to go into the Peace Corps at 29 because I something in my gut said you need to do something else you need to do something different and I didn't sort of attribute it to my gut back then, but I've listened to, I've learned to listen to that feeling. Uh, and I sort of define my life by the things that I've quit. Uh, what do, <laughs> I can't wait to hear more. <laughs> and so quitting that career and going in the Peace Corps and I, I got sent to Uzbekistan oh, wow. in 1999 and was teaching at a university. Uh, it was about three months from the end of service, the 9-11 happened. Mm. Um, and something said to me, you're not finished in this region. You're not finished in this kind of work. Uh, so I got, I was able to actually pretty soon after 9-11, get a job with USAID to go back to the region. Wow. Uh, spent two years in Tajikistan from 2001 to 2003, uh, right on the front lines, um, of the world terror. Uh, so, but it was doing amazing work. Uh, the, the Tajiks had just come out of a civil war. So we were helping them sort of come out of that civil war in that time in their, in their country's history, but also working with cross-border trade with Afghanistan, working with young people uh, to, to build the economies of those countries so that, that they had alternatives uh, to other, other things like uh, extremism and terrorism. Um, so just an incredible time. Yeah. Um, spent six years in the region and then had that feeling again that it was time to do something different. To quit. To quit. Um, and start, we came back to the States and my business partner and I started a, uh, we bought a, a one product toy company out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. You know, you know Myrtle <laughs> Beach. <laughs> yeah, my hometown. <laughs> um, and started our journey into building a, an international toy company. Yeah. Did you know anything about business at that point? Absolutely not. <laughs> everything I'd read in school and every, yeah, every, yeah. every class I'd ever sat in. Yeah. I, I thought I did. Yeah. Right. I thought I did. But, um, what I learned was that, that, uh, 
it takes grit, it takes determination, it takes uh, discipline, it takes um, all things that I think I had some of, not all of, but some of in my life. Um, but, you know, you learn, you learn how to, to make it and you learn how to survive and you learn how to, you, you make mistakes, make a lot of mistakes. Um, we don't talk a lot about the mistakes. Um, you know, places like this, we like to talk well, about this our is this is the place of mistakes. We, we like to talk about our successes, right? But but the fact is, you, you make a lot of mistakes with people, with uh, product, with managing. Um, but it's it's the learning process, and if you learn from it and you you grow from it, then then that's um, you know you can be successful. But God, we made a ton of mistakes, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of mistakes. Oh gosh. So expensive mistakes is what expensive you're saying. Expensive mistakes, yes. But when did you quit that and go to something else for your next turning point? Oh, thank you for bringing. Us no, back. I'm, I'm just yeah, intrigued. For... <laughs> I'm like, wow, what, what's going on here? I need thanks to know. Thanks for bringing us back to the question. That was good. That was good. Um, very subtle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. It's good. good. <laughs> so uh, you know, so then you know, we we grew that, and that was a successful company, and we we were able to do. Um, work in 35 countries and do product for Toys R Us and, wow. um, and really make a real go of it. But the business was changing, the, the environment with Amazon growing and, and online shopping uh, growing and, and electronics, like things like iPads and uh, sort of taking, really hurting the toy industry in terms of uh, physical play toys. You know, we saw sort of the writing on the wall, and so we had an opportunity to sell the company in 2014. And so we said, you know, it's time. It's time to, to let somebody else see what they can do with it. Uh, and so that was the next turning point. That was like, it's time. Let's, we have an opportunity. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and it feels like each time it's like a six-ish year increment. I'm wondering where you are in your current iteration in, in the, like, are we at the I'm end at of seven, six years? I'm, I'm seven years in now. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm in dangerous territory, I guess. <laughs> but I'm actually, I'm in a really good place with where I am now. And I don't see that happening. When do you think in your life you've had a, a great moment of clarity? Um, maybe even a point where you've said everything from, from, from now on makes more sense because here's what I'm here to do. Have you had a moment like that? Absolutely. I, and pretty recently, uh, in the last couple of years. So COVID, COVID was sort of that whole, was a big moment of clarity for me in a lot of ways. But the you know, prior COVID, I was struggling in my coaching business that I, that I currently run. In, in terms of who I was really could help, what kind of work I could be, what kind of coaching I could really be doing. And, and, and I had taken jobs and coaching assignments with various types of leaders and various types of people. Uh, but I, I, I was struggling. I was, I was still spinning my wheels to grow and I was still spinning my wheels to sort of figure out who I am as a coach and, and the type of person I can really help and impact because you can't help everybody. Right. You can't, you don't connect with everybody and you don't, um, your expertise doesn't, click with everybody that you and so I was still struggling to find that and in the pandemic I joined this organization called the Marshall Goldsmith 100 coaches and, and Marshall's a national resident actually but he's one of the top executive coaches in the world and uh, he brought us together some of the best coaches in the world as a group uh, and I've learned so much from that group of people and it's helped me focus we started doing accountability sessions every week and we, had, we we've got together in small groups and my business started growing. Hmm. And so I started thinking about this about a, a year and a half ago and, and sort of figuring, trying to figure out why. Yes, it's the network, but more importantly, these people hold me accountable every week to what I say I want to accomplish. They push me really hard. They make me learn things. They make me, they push yeah. me to learn and grow. And I started thinking about our time in the toy business when I had a business partner. We held each other accountable. We pushed each other. We, folk, we helped each other focus. I had the worst case of ADD in the world. Focus is a big problem. So that what I started thinking about was every time in my life where I had somebody that pushed me, that helped me, that helped keep me focused, yeah. that helped keep 
pushing me and, and, and challenging me, I responded and I was able to do something positive and something good. And so it's really refocused my work on accountability and made that the focus. And, and I work with people who want somebody to help them. They want somebody to push them. Yeah. I get results in that way. I, that's, that's what's refocused my work. And the moment of clarity is, is that accountability for me, having somebody to help me and push me every day is what I needed to, to, to sort of be successful. When I, when I don't have that in my life, I don't go to the gym. I don't go to, you know, I don't do the yeah. things I need to be doing for, for my health and for, for my growth. So. Yeah. Well, let's talk deeper about accountability. Um, I find it really interesting what your company does, really, because you have figured out a way to um, build this framework about around keeping people accountable. Because, um, you know, if we just have this idea in our mind that we want to do something but don't do anything else, how likely are we that we're actually going to achieve a goal? Right? Not yeah. not very likely. But you have figured out a way to make it way more likely that someone's going to be able to achieve whatever it is that they want to do by having partners and accountability. So walk me through what you've created and, and, and what your company does. I mean, I, we've tried to simplify it because it's it isn't complicated and and I like to overcomplicate things. And so <laughs> don't we all <laughs> you know, so but it, it's almost as simple as you and I sitting down every week and, and having down written down goals and and clear clear goals and, and things that are attainable and things that will move the needle for you, whatever whatever it is you want to do, whether it's your health, whether it's your wealth, whether it's your uh, your business goal, whether your business goals, whether it's your family and and, and health and wellness goals. Um, and so we have we have this whole category, these several categories. We have happiness. So I'll just explain what's on my happiness list. So I have things like I make sure I call my kids every night, right? I make sure that I, we, do, we do date night every week. Make sure that, we, um, uh, that I call my, my dad once a week, you know, just to make sure. I, and I'm awful at communication. So my happiness goals, I, have to, I, I clearly spell out what I want to do every week. And, I, and when I, at the end of the week, I can check, you know, check the boxes that's, that's, that's progress. That's good for me. Um, I also have, I, I, I call a friend every week that I hadn't talked to. In oh, a good. Long time. Yeah. So those are the kind of things I have on my happiness on the health goals. I have, you know, the, the walking and the, the workouts and the, the eating right and, and things, which we didn't accomplish today, which, but, but that's okay. It was the mac and cheese. <laughs> it was the mac and cheese. It was good. It was good. It's all good. I'm not complaining. You can have some cheat days. Um, but, uh, and on the wealth goals, it's it's the managing the money and the and the things. So it's it's things that are really really important that I stay on top of, or the kinds of things that I have on my sort of to do list every week, and that somebody asks me about every week. How did you do? Well, why didn't you accomplish that this week? Yeah. What happened? So you're 95 percent more effective or likely to accomplish a goal if you have it written down, if if you have somebody that asks you about it every week, and that you've told them that this is what you want to accomplish. So if you have those three things going on, you're, you're, you can accomplish so much more because it, it, everybody needs somebody to, to hold them accountable. Is it like um, having a, a frequent conversation with another person who also has their own goals? Or is it someone who's lording over you to say, you know, wagging their finger, did you do this or did you not do this? It's not like having a drill sergeant, you know, yeah. yelling at you. That's not our model. The model is... We have the way we do it is we have six people in a in a group. Uh, every week you meet for one hour. You have your spreadsheet. Um, you have the things that you that are on your and they're constant goals. They're not they don't change. Yeah, it's not like a to do list this week. It's this right. is what I need to consistently work toward. And it's mostly big stuff. It's it's stuff that's going to help you be the better you that you that you want to be. Uh, very simple though. A lot of these things are not complicated, but they're hard, mm. right? They're, they're, they're simple, but not easy to do all the time. Uh, because there's a, some, a lot of these things are things that you would put aside when you're busy. Totally. Right. Our right. health always goes by the wayside. Right. Eating right gets trumped for convenience, right? right. Working out gets moved because I don't have enough time for that or right. whatever. Right. You, you nailed it. So, then you're in your group, you sit down every week and you talk about why you did or didn't do what you said you were going to do. 
and people can ask questions in the group. And say, does this really matter to you? You're not getting this done. Right. That's exactly, that's the key is that you see, and we do it in red, green, and yellow. So it's very easy to see you've made progress, you've made a little bit of progress, or you didn't make any progress. And yeah. you start seeing trends over a period of weeks. And if you have a lot of red and yellow, then there are a lot of questions about, is that mm. the right goal? Is that something that's that you're really serious about? Is that something you really want to accomplish? Because right. if you haven't made any progress on it, then you got to ask yourself, is that real? Mm. So. It's a simple system, it's a simple process, but the groups stay together. I've been in a, one of these groups now for two and a half years. Wow, and not with just anybody. I mean, you've got important big people in your groups. It's pretty incredible. But they, they all have a similar desire to push themselves harder because we know that we don't push ourselves as hard as we can. We, we can't find that other gear without help. Hmm. We're not gonna push ourselves uh, to the, to, like others can, right? Why do you think accountability is so important? I mean, is it just the the having the awareness that you can't do this on your own, or is it creating community around mm -hmm. making yourself better? What do you think it is? I think people come to these groups because they want to get better. I think they want the community. Uh, they want. They don't want to do this alone. Uh, they don't want to feel like they're they're trying to accomplish everything that they want to accomplish. Uh, they want to be able to talk to somebody that's been there, that's experiencing the same kind of. Uh, and these groups, are, a lot of people are in business. They're in, they're doing amazing things. They, they're worth talking to every week. They've got valuable insight into what you're facing. Yeah. They've been there, and so uh, it's it's nice to talk to people who are struggling too, who are trying yeah. to to make improvements. And, and so having that community is extremely important. Uh, but the common trait, I mean, you interview people all the time, you interview successful people. And, and I, I get the honor to do that as well. And one of the things I find in, in super successful people is that sense of accountability, is that they have an ownership for their behavior, they have ownership of their results, they have ownership of, of what it is they're trying to accomplish and they feel a responsibility uh, for the outcomes and, 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 and how they perform. Mm. And that's a common trait I see in really successful people. And, and if you have that, if that's, you know, if that's a trait that you have and that's how you feel about things, then a program like this can really move you way forward uh, yeah. because you, you've got those elements, you've got those characteristics, those, principles of accountability already sort of ingrained in your, yeah. in your DNA. Let's dig into that because I feel like what I'm hearing from you is, is a level of awareness that m successful people have to have a, a level of self-awareness of where their limits are, what they need help with. Do you feel like having an accountability partner, for example, helps amp up that awareness of self? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, when somebody's sort of pushing you and pushing you and pushing you and asking you why every week. Uh, it's a powerful motivator. I mean, that peer pressure, it's good peer pressure. Uh, that's a positive thing uh, that, and not everybody responds to that. I mean, it's not for everybody, but for people who are serious about, I think, who understand that they can't do it alone, that they need help, that it's nice to talk to somebody. And, and you've got to have a level of, uh, like you said, self-awareness, but I also, also think it's about being comfortable in your own skin and being comfortable with yourself and your flaws and your, the thing, your shortcomings, which we all have, uh, and being able to, to express those and, and have somebody help you walk you through and, and be another set of eyes. The, the way I look at it is, it's kind of like, Olympic athletes and, and, and high caliber athletes. Uh, I think you've got Marcus on this season, you know, yeah. Marcus will tell you, we, we talk about this all the time that they're used to, I mean, people like that are used to pushing themselves yeah. and being pushed. They're right. used to being pushed. Right. We all need that. We can all benefit from that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's interesting because you know, there, there does have to be, 
uh, again, the awareness of the shortcomings. But I wonder, is there a point even in these in in this accountability relationship that a person has that they even begin to view themselves differently? Maybe what was perceived as a shortcoming may not be the shortcoming they think it is. Maybe there's actually some strength in that, or maybe um, maybe they're changing their viewpoint because then they have five other people in a group who are helping them to say, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's reframe that because what you think is actually a shortcoming isn't. Right. Maybe it's only partially true. Maybe this becomes your greatest strength. Uh, people don't do this the way you do this. So you're bringing a valuable um, you know, point of view. So then you've got these other people who are helping you not just achieve a goal, but reframe your entire viewpoint of a situation. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely. I mean, hands down, that happens all the time. What you also find is that people say, I didn't realize that this was a real huge issue for me now that I, I see this clearly through, I mean, a lot of people are visual. The thing that, that helps me with, with on, my, on my goals is I can see visually what's, what I'm really, truly, what's important to me. Like you can see it in your mind's eye, you're saying? No, or I can see it on can paper. See... When I see it okay. on paper, when I see that visual reference, when I see red across the, 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 the whole thing, <laughs> it, it, it clearly defines for me that that's not important. And, and I thought mm. it was important. I was thinking it was important, but it's not. But what happens is I had a CEO the other day tell me, he said, I, I've hired people now to help cover my weaknesses. Hmm. He said it was so, the, this, this, this exercise for the last six months has helped me so clearly understand myself better. Oh yeah. That I've been able to hire people that's, that fix or, or sort of help me sort of fill in the gaps. Yeah, they where augment, I, right? right? They augment they fill in the gaps way. where, where I'm, I'm deficient, which I'm okay with now. Yeah. I've gotten over that. But I realize I, and I'm, 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 I'm weak there. I'm going to be weak there. So I need to fix that. I need to bring somebody else on that can help sort of fix that gap. And, yeah. and that's okay. I, I can't help but think as I listen to this, you know, at, in my own experience, I've always been someone who... Uh, I've never liked group work, right? Mm -hmm. So like growing up, I was the person that please don't put me in a group. Um, I'd rather, I'd much rather work alone. I sure. think, I think there's two parts of that. Like I have a way that I, you know, I want this project to be a certain way. I want right. this to be written this way. Um, and then I would, I would find that I would end up doing all the work because right. I was the one who cared the most, right? Or right. I was the most anal. So I would do it that way. The older I've gotten, and I think probably as the stakes have gotten higher, I've taken on more in my own life, there are things that I realize I cannot do. I cannot get, I cannot get to that. You know, I've got three little children. I work full time. Oh, and I'm starting this podcast. I can't do that. And so it, it's been an interesting change for me of like this needing community, creating community um, that inspires and inspires others, but also forces collaboration. I wonder in your uh, accountability settings, how often you're dealing with people who feel like they've finally come to the end of themselves. Maybe they're even burnt out on their own inability to get everything done or can't figure out why they can't make headway. And, and are there kind of like light bulb moments in those groups, or do you think people have already gotten past that and that's why they're in the group to begin with? It's mixed. I think that there are people that, what happens is a lot of times people will come and they're doing really well, maybe in the business side, but the health is a disaster. Yeah. Maybe they've got some relationship disasters or there's, there's, there's something out of harmony in their life. Uh, and I, and I know that feeling well, right? I, when I've, we used you just sort of alluded to it a few minutes ago when I was going full hundred percent, hundred and fifty percent in the toy company, my health was awful. I was, I wasn't doing the hobbies that I, that I really loved, the things that made me, me, I wasn't probably wasn't a great husband at the time. Um, wasn't a great, you know, in that, so I wasn't, the business was going great. But I wasn't really doing great on the others on the other mm. er, in the other areas. I had to find that harmony and that balance. Um, you know, we talk a lot about work-life balance. I don't think that that's a thing. I think it should. I think we should be trying to get work-life harmony. Hmm. You know, um, 
because the work kind of ebbs and flows, right? Your professional stuff sometimes takes a big role. Sometimes parenthood takes a bigger role. Sometimes other things in your life or you, you have to shift focus and energy to something specific. Uh, and so I, I think people come a lot of times because something is out of whack. Hmm. Something's not in harmony and they want to try to figure that out and fix it. And, and this, this groups, again, you're in there with people who've been through it. You're in there with people who've been in the trenches. You've been in people who've been, are successful. And, and so the groups, uh, but they've all been through this. We all go through, we all yeah. have to find our way through a lot of this. Um, and, and people who've accomplished a lot have just figured it or not always figured it out, but they've, they've, they've thought about these things and they've tried and failed and they've, you know, and hopefully they have some advice and help and can help guide people uh, through a certain, you know, uh, stage. That person may help that person, uh, you know, in the reverse, there may be a business problem that that, that yeah. person that's really doing well there can help somebody else solve. So they, the groups tend to help each other in multiple ways. Um, so much of it, you have so many um, musical stylings here <laughs> with <laughs> harmony. I'm thinking of like the discord that comes along when things are out of whack. Um, and in so many ways, like I'm thinking, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking of you as like a fine tuner, you know, that you're, you're helping people tune. And you do to me, as I listen to you, I, you feel so evolved to me. And so it's interesting to me to, to hear you say that your moment of clarity was only just recently, like in the last couple of years, yeah. as it like, like hit you, you know, because I just feel like this level of wisdom doesn't just happen in the last two years. I feel like maybe you've always had that. And then you've had this deeper understanding that's just popped in here in the last couple of years. I'm a late bloomer, you know? Oh, I see. I don't think so. I feel like you've been doing all this stuff all, all along, you know? Um, and I do, I, I, I do find it interesting because you do lead so many people. I mean, you speak all over the world. Um, and then you also listen all over the world too, with your own, uh, podcast pursuits. What do you think that you're hearing from people a lot right now? Maybe even since COVID, is there like a, is there something, is there a melody maybe as we continue our metaphor, is there something that you're hearing consistently from people that's different? I, you know, that's a fascinating question. And um, everybody I talked to in the last couple of years is longing for people to be kinder. Um, I think they're longing for love. They're, they're longing for us to be able to communicate better. I think there's a frustration um, that we've forgotten how to talk to each other mm. and actually embrace difference instead of making it some uh, thing that, that divides us. Yeah. Um, there's a, I think there's just a real longing for for all of us to be able to talk to each other better, uh, be kinder. Um, yeah. And I was thinking of what that, what I, you know, for me, what, what, it, <laughs> what does that all mean? And I, I, COVID has been really rough on a lot of people. And, and I think we have to acknowledge that. But I, you know, we've had, I've had two friends die from it. Mm, I'm sorry. Um, and And, and it was, I was angry about that um, because they didn't wear a mask and they didn't, they didn't take the, the vaccine and we all grew up together. But I guess I can't really be angry about that anymore. I guess I have to say I loved them. Mm -hmm. They were great. They were great people. Uh, we had differences. Um, as we grew older, we had differences. But, um, but I think people just want some love. I think they want love. I think they want um, us to be kinder and, and, and nicer to one another. Yeah. I do feel like you, you can't take that, a person can't take that stance of wanting more love unless they will give it and then give it to themselves too. I do feel like there's a, there's also a void there right now. Um, and maybe COVID was the awakening we needed for the, the love we weren't sharing with each other, but also the love we haven't shared or shown to ourselves, you know, and I, and I do think it does go back to um, being able to achieve at the highest level 
must come with some recognition of, of the faults, the shortcomings, uh, where we all need help, where we struggle. Um, I know for me personally, I never felt like I could do, I, I felt like I could do everything. But then when I had children, it was like this first realization, like, ah, I can't, I can't do this alone. I can't do right. this by myself. It requires support in some way. It requires a conversation with another woman who's been there, you know, and, right. and I'm sure in the business community, it's the same way. Wow. I, I don't know a lot of CEOs. I'm having a problem. Where's another CEO that can help right. me who can just talk to me about what's going on. Cause we do have to offload some of that, you know, yeah. give ourselves the grace, but then also in that process, give others too. Yeah. Are you seeing that in, in, the work that you're doing as people long for love, do you find that they're also turning, turning that back to themselves and giving themselves what they're also longing for? Yeah. I mean, that's what we're trying to accomplish. I think that's one of the keys that we're trying to, I mean, this whole accountability movement that we're trying to, to really start and, 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 sh and show people a different way. Uh, part of that is self love. I mean, that's why the happiness goals are on there. Two or three, four years ago, if you just said, make sure you call your, your kids every day, make sure you, you know, you call your dad once a week, make sure you dial up a friend that you hadn't talked to yeah. in a while, uh, tell people you love them. Yeah. You know, that wasn't on my list. Right. Well, that, that's all important. of those, that's connection. Like, right. connect, it's interesting that we're, we're pulling happiness. Like my happiness is dependent on connection. Maybe that's the word. Connection? connection. Maybe it's not love so much but maybe mm. connection well and and as you know everything is automated now everything's online now and we were all so apart for a couple of years and so i do i do hope that it's been this pendulum swing i know for me it's felt that way of like needing and craving connection it's yeah. truly like the root of this podcast craving deeper connection with people um to understand where we're the same you know yeah. And for anyone to listen, this is why I ask, when was the worst time in your life? When was the best time? Because someone can look at that and go, oh, wow, gosh, she's had a harder slog than me. You know, I feel connected to that person because I've had a similar thing. I've also dealt with a child that had special health issues at the beginning of their lives. You know, yeah. um, there are so many things that connect us. And it's interesting even to put together connection with accountability because it fosters trust. Right, you yeah. have to trust someone to be able to share with them. Right, hmm. and the counter to that is that we don't accept accountability often because of fear, and because we're scared of failure, we're scared of criticism, we're scared of the consequence of, of failure, we're scared of or the consequence of accountability. Uh, so, accountability is a scary word to a lot of people, and to a lot, in, in a lot of ways because it means that we are responsible. We, are, we have to own mm. whatever our reactions are, whatever our, our, our feelings are. We have to own what, how the results of whatever it is we're doing. So that's, that's scary. Yeah. Uh, because we've created a culture where um, that, that can be, that's, you know, that's not good. It's not as bad to be, to own a failure or a mistake. Yeah. Yeah, because, well, look, we're in the age of Instagram and everything's perfect on Instagram. Right, right. <laughs> so to embrace something right. that's imperfect, it's like, whoa, wait, what? Right. And we don't have great models of leaders accepting responsibility. Oh, uh, true. It's it's always, you know, well, let's blame COVID or let's blame mm. someone else for yeah. what happened. Yeah. I do like one of the ways that you sort of position what you do uh, and saying, you know, there's a lot of new like modalities and new ways to do things, but I'm not a new guy. Like I just do things the old way. And a lot of what you're saying sounds to me like, wow, this is what my mom taught me. Wow. This is, this is what I grew up with. This is what my parents said. My you know? grandfather used to tell me and talk to me about, you know, yeah. when I was 11, um, you gotta own it. Yeah. Do what you say you're going to do. That was like my bet. That was my dad's biggest thing. Do yeah. what you say you're going to do. And it's just that simple, right? Well, obviously difficult, right. but it is that simple. It is. Yeah. What would you say is something about your nature you've had to overcome or you continue to overcome? <laughs> oh, the list is long. Um, <laughs> I think I mentioned I probably have the worst case of ADD in the world. <laughs> that you don't, that doesn't focus, like come through to me. Focus, focus, focus. I can go down a rabbit hole in a second. Um, <laughs> I think um, what I've realized is communication. I'm perfectly happy getting lost in 
in, in a book or a rabbit hole on, online or, you know, reading something or writing something. Um, and the reason, again, going back to my sort of list of stuff that I, I have to focus on is I can let weeks go by and it's not because I don't want to talk to someone or I don't want to make that phone call or, or pick up the phone and, and have that difficult conversation. It's just, I'm in my own head and I'm, it's not intentional, but I'm, I'm an awful communicator. I disagree. But please let me shine the mirror to you right now. I think you're an excellent communicator. But that's work. But that's that's actual hard work to make sure I do that. Right? Um, it's not it's not easy for me. I'm I'm not. The older I get, the less I thought I, I used to think I was a an out a, a, an extrovert, and I'm I'm totally not. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> It's it's something that I have to really really overcome and work on. But I mean, you're you're talking about it as if it's a if it, as if it's a negative. I don't to me I don't see any of that as a negative. I see that as no. here's who you are. Here's who you are. But you know, if you don't communicate, you you can't you can't be effective, right? And yeah. If I'm happier being in a book and I and I get lost in a book or in reading or writing something, and I don't make that phone call. I, I leave something on the table. I leave an issue out there. I don't, if I don't pick up the phone call and call um, my kids every day or my, or my father once a week or a friend or then I, I lose opportunities to, to, to build, to connect, to connect. Yeah. And, and that's on me. Yeah. Yeah. And it does then uh, dictate some level of happiness, right? And mm -hmm. fulfillment in that. Yeah. But I don't like doing this. I mean, I don't, I, <laughs> You don't like calling your dad? <laughs> I, mean, I don't. I don't. I don't like talking on the phone. I don't like do. You know. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I don't you, like doing email. I don't like sitting down and doing email. Right. I, mean, I hate it. Yeah. But you know, it's become a necessary thing. Yeah, it's part of it. And then you spend so many hours of your life on a plane from yeah. fly, flying from one place to the next place, and and oftentimes that's the only way that you can connect, right? Is on mm -hmm. a phone or over email. Right. Um, what would you say your purpose is? I, I think it's to create that movement where we I was talking about with mm. accountability. I, I, that's become clear, clear to me in the last couple of years is that that is my purpose is to create that movement to help leaders, uh, understand that accountability is the key to success. It's a prerequisite. So for me, accountability is a, this movement is a prerequisite for everything that you want to do. It's a prerequisite for change. It's a prerequisite for success. When you, when you accept that, that accountability is, is and, and the principles of accountability are so in critical to whatever it is you really want to accomplish, um, that's, that's the purpose is to help leaders see that and understand it and live it, embrace it and, 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 and do their thing. Yeah. So, and create a community. Going back to what you said, Part of that is creating a community where people can cannot be alone in that in yeah. that in that sort of uh, uh, you know in in that sort of ideal or in that sort yeah. of um, it, it's result. almost I feel like in those sorts of times too like when you're when you're I mean, I just think about times in my own life when I have felt alone, it does feel like you're in a desert, whether you're in a desert of uh, problems that you can't seem to, that seem insurmountable, that you can't seem to, to overcome, or at a time when you're in a, in a real pickle, and you can't figure out the answers. Um, you know, hopefully we're fortunate enough, fortunate enough that we have people in our lives that can come up with ideas or see something differently. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have that, um, gosh, I feel like a group like that would be so killer important, you know, to have people with shared experience uh, and shared outlook and shared pressure. Because how often do we go to someone and need advice, but they don't, they don't know the pressure. They don't know the pressure of what right. it's like to be an, exe an executive. Everybody's looking right. at them to be thinking five years out, 10 years out, and they don't have the answers. Right. Yeah. And the other thing about these groups is that they don't want anything from you. They, 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 it's not like you're talking to a friend or a business colleague and, and you're not being vulnerable to someone at work. These are people who um, don't have a stake in what you're doing at your job or yeah. they're not a competitor. They're not someone that, that you feel awkward about being vulnerable with. 
Uh, these are people that um, are truly are there just to listen and, and be, you know, in the group to, to sort of co-share and co-learn and co- and co-grow. <laughs> co-grow. I've never, never used that. <laughs> I like before, that. But, but the assonance is there, so right. it works. Co-grow. <laughs> right. You know, and, and and I think that's I think you're absolutely right. I, I would also say though, it's not about joining our groups. Yeah. It's about finding somebody in your life at the end of the day that you can even if it's a really good friend, yeah. but it's gotta be a friend that's gonna push you. It's not gonna friend that's gonna it's not it's not a friend that lets you slide. <laughs> right. It's not your it's not the guy that's gonna Say, oh, it's okay. Yeah, you're okay. You didn't do that this week. That's okay. Yeah. It's got to be somebody in your life that is is willing to push you and ask you the tough questions and call bullshit on your stuff, yeah. right? If I hope that's permissible. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> okay. Dish it all out. <laughs> no, but you know, somebody that can call you on your stuff. Yeah. At least get that person in your life, and you guys work together on a weekly basis. Spend thirty minutes a week together and push each other, you know, write your goals down. It's that simple. Right. Well, that's, I'm so glad you brought this up because that's exactly what I was going to ask you next is what do we need to do? Like someone who hears this or watches this and they're like, okay, you're right. I, you, I'm sold on accountability. I need accountability. What's step one? Is it let's pull out all the things that we want to accomplish or is it first acknowledging the shortcomings? What is step one? You have to acknowledge your shortcomings. Absolutely. You have to understand who you are. I mean, you should do that self work anyway, before you even think about accountability, you gotta, you gotta know who you are and you gotta know what your limitations are and where your shortcomings are. And you know, what's, are you really going to go lose that 30 pounds? Are you really gonna, you know, you gotta kind of know who you are. Yeah. Um, and the, the next step is finding that, that right person. Then you guys, then the two of you sitting down or three or four or whatever, you, if you want to make a group out of it, that's great. Um, and write down your, your happiness goals and your wealth goals and your business goals and your, um, your, you know, figure out what's important to you. Uh, and then meet once a week and say, I accomplished this this week. I accomplished that. I did that. Um, and, and do that on a weekly basis. And you you're 95% more likely to achieve those goals if you do do it that way. Uh, again, you got to have somebody that pushes you. Yeah. But um, and 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 you've got to have goals that push you. It, it's if if you already run five days a week and go to the gym five days a week and you eat well and you and you've been doing that for years, you can't put that down because that's not. <laughs> that's a checklist item because you're already doing it. Right. right. That's not. That's not. That doesn't count. Yeah. It's got to be stuff that you won't do. Yeah. That that you need to do unless somebody's holding you accountable. So yeah. that's that's the distinction, I think. I love that. Was there ever anything on your list that became a glaringly obvious thing that you said, oh, I must not really care about this. I must not really have this goal. I need to remove it. Was there anything for you like that? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I, I do it all the time. I mean, um, I, I wasn't gonna eat, um, <laughs> I wasn't not going to eat macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, back to the food, the good food. <laughs> no, I mean, but seriously, no, um, there were there were some health goals, um, things that I had started out thinking I needed to do that I, I didn't like doing. And, and so if I wasn't really going to like doing that activity hmm. um, from an exercise perspective or things that I thought I might try that I would keep, you know, but I, I didn't do it. So and I didn't like doing them. So yeah. I'm picking up that you you really should like what you're set what goal you're setting for yourself. You might want to enjoy it to some degree. Yeah, I think that's important. I think yeah. you have to to in order to be serious about continuing to do it, or at least see the merit. I mean, there's plenty of things that I'm sure people put on lists that they're like, I really don't want to do this, but I know I have to do it. For example, right. like I got to be better about my finances. Don't really want to do it, but I have to do it. So right. whether I enjoy it or not, I realize how important this is. Yeah, I mean, they were, they've always, uh, mine shift, uh, you know, I, I kind of analyze them every few months. Uh, I mean, there's always a financial goal that I sort of tweak. There are things I have to tweak. I don't change a lot of stuff now. Uh, every year I change a little bit, but uh, now I just tweak. Uh, there might be a, a monetary goal or there might be a, some other goal only that I have to sort of adjust because I, maybe I overshot or undershot or what have you. So, but, but. I don't change a lot of the big 
big line items anymore. I change some tactics. I might change some some things like that, but I don't change the big stuff anymore. I, I think I've got it zeroed in. Yeah. Well, uh, here's to continued zeroing in, friend. Correct. Here's to that. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here, Brett. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments below, like it, share it with someone who needs to hear it. I'm adding new videos all the time to help you reconnect with self and then prepare for purpose. And since you're here, I've gone ahead and linked my playlist, the episode Amplified. It gives shorter clips from each episode, still though very much power packed with encouragement. It's all right here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.